Chances are, if you lived on Long Island, you grew up enjoying hot summer days at Jones Beach State Park. You've probably seen college kids pushing red carts, selling ice cream, and thought little of it. But there is so much more to the story behind these red carts and the man that started it, Rob Guerra. This is a story of inspiration and ice cream. The people pushing these red carts, and it all started with Rob's promise to his uncle.
It's the start of summer, and the Jones Beach Memorial Day Air Show is considered one of the best in the country, drawing between 300 to 400,000 spectators over the holiday weekend, and with perfect weather forecasted, it's all hands on deck for what promises to be another busy summer selling ice cream across the beaches of Long Island. Yeah, we go through a lot of ice cream. I, I, offhand, I, I really can't tell you how much. Preparation for the air show is really a dynamic thing. It, it takes a couple, a couple of weeks just to get ready for that air show um, because safety is a big factor and we have this four-wheeled uh, four-wheel doom buggy that's on the beach with hundreds and thousands of people here so we got to be really cautious with that we want to make sure that all the vendors go out with enough ice cream we want to make sure that they're not running into anybody that's on the beach it's really hard for them to maneuver around because of the amount of people that are on the beach so that's why we, we always have a, a big abundance of uh, vendors and they just stay put right where they are it just it just makes it easier all around and my insurance company loves it. I breathe easier, and uh, it's just good to know everybody's just out having a great time. It's, it's all part of the marketing technique. Bam, and he's all set to go. Um, I go through about 30,000 pounds of dry ice uh, a season, which is a, it's, it's a lot of dry ice. And th those blocks of ice are 50 pounds each. And I've got scars, these are my summer scars, to prove that I also am hands-on employee, hands-on uh, supervisor, owner of the company. Yeah, that's me. Um, so I, I want to be there. I want to know and experience what my employees are feeling when they're out there. They're the ones with the toes in the sand, you know, boots on the ground. So they're out there. They're telling me everything. They tell me their needs, what works, what doesn't work. Um. The world famous Jones Beach State Park covers an expansive six and a half miles of Long Island's South Shore. Jones Beach can attract over six million people each year while some come to ride bikes and walk the boardwalk, most come for the sand and waves. Each morning, the carts are lined up, and it's a team effort to get all the carts ready for the day out on the beach. Dry ice is added, and the carts are stocked with a variety of ice creams. Good humor brands like Strawberry Shortcake, Chocolate Eclair, King Cone's ice cream sandwiches. They also carry Chipwich Cookies ice cream sandwiches, Spider-Man and SpongeBob themed ice cream bars, Bomb Pops snow cones, and my favorite, Magnum bars, and Snickers candy bar ice cream. Each of these is meticulously inventoried. Every cart is checked throughout the day. Carts and their handlers or vendors are in constant communication to track sales and are restocked continually Supervisors in blue shirts will run fresh stocks of ice cream to meet with the vendors on the beach. It's a continual support and communication system that goes on almost every day during the summer. Let, let the 
it off. I can get the sunscreen. Yeah, bring it out. Bring it out. I want everybody to sunscreen up. about the airplanes, any joke, anything about going to college. You guys want to go to college, let them know what you want to do. Be personal with these people. They're really great. Um, we're going to divide you guys up. We're going to send some of you to field one, some to two, three, four, five, all the way to six. When you need a refill, what you're going to have to do is you either go, you got to text Evan or myself. Depending on which field you're at, you're also going to tell us exactly what you want. It's still early in the morning as the air show crowds begin filling up the beaches as this busy Memorial Day start to summer is about to begin. Rob assigns his team to various points on the beach and also shares with them tips and tricks he's learned from his own experiences. Yeah, 
to stand on your cart and scream ice cream! The ice cream man's here! That's what you're gonna do to attract attention. Bob relies on both a mix of experienced and returning staff and new hires that start on his busy first weekend. Some on his team have been working summers with him for several years. This holiday weekend, he'll have over a dozen vendors on the sand. But the season is just getting underway and still his crew from Columbia won't be here for a few more weeks. I'm from Colombia and I'm living this experience for the first time in my life. Um, back in Colombia I was thinking about doing something different, uh, maybe traveling, working and I found this opportunity thanks to Rob and it has been amazing uh, selling ice cream. It's, it's like a really good job because you get to see people happy. Ice cream makes people happy so uh, the energy that you feel here, the kids, uh, the families, it's all amazing. I've got to know uh, a lot of people that have had changed my life. Um, it's a really cool experience. Rob is an amazing person. He has taught me really cool things about life, about his experience, about how all of this started and I'm glad to be a part of this all. Um, it's my first time in New York and it's been amazing. I know that I need to came, come back next year um, and I'm glad, I'm grateful uh, for living this experience with all of this and I'm happy about it. And I saw um, a little boy, well he was not little but he was, he had uh, something, he wasn't uh, talking a lot but when he saw me uh, he started clapping and laughing and he was really really happy to see me so I I come close to him and he started talking to me um, tell me what's what's my name um, choosing what ice cream would he want and he he was not talking that good but I understand that he had something and then when I when I gave him the ice cream and all of that the father came to me and said that it was the first time he was communicating with the world and it was it was amazing like living that knowing that I'm part of it that he was trying to communicate with me knowing that he that it was difficult to him and giving the ice cream, making him happy, it was, it was amazing. And that's a really, really grateful and cool experience that I live in this summer, selling ice creams. I wasn't gonna have one, I'll do the chip wedge. Of course. Look, those are there all. There you go. That one you could have too. For you. Would this you is, rather that? For you? This is nut free too. Yep. Oh, sorry. No, Thank it's okay. You. So I'll get you that nut free. Oh. There That's you so go. I know to find that. And chip which for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We, I mean, in general, we have had some amazing, amazing days. And people are just fine, you know? So. They always say like you bring happiness to the beach and that's that's how I look at it. What's it like working with Rob? Well, Rob is a really nice person, so he's he's been very helpful 
uh, very kind to all of us. And well, the thing that he's done for us are just great. Like, I'm so grateful for what he has done for all of us. All of us, like Colombians, bringing all these people together to get on the beach in New York, which is actually that's funny. Not too many people know there are beaches in New York, you know? So, uh, yeah, it's, it's fun. Live in my comfort zone. That's one of the things that I, yeah, that I appreciate the most uh, about him. He also likes, I mean, he, he enjoys taking out, taking us to do something different, you know? So selling ice cream on the beach, that's something I never thought about. Uh, going to karaoke, for example, skydiving. Those are little challenges that you usually don't do and well overcome that situation that little I hear her. uncomfortable thing that you feel that and then being able to go through that it makes you it builds character that's what i want to say you know so being here on the beach uh go skydiving yeah it, it builds a different character so i i know for sure that i came to the u.s as one person and i'm when I go back home, I'll be different, you know? I am different now. Uh, I like to take challenges more than I used to do back in Colombia. So, yeah, it's, it's something that it really hit me and I'm sticking to it for the, the rest of my life. My name is Sonia Pinzon, I'm from Bogota, Colombia. Um, I'm the Beachside Ballet Manager in Jones Beach this year. Uh, I'm 33 years old. It's my, my, it's my first time as a manager. Um, last summer I came here uh, as a vendor and Rob said that uh, I did a great job so he wants me to, to manage this year. Okay, when I was a vendor, uh, I shared a lot with people in the beach, with the kids. It was an amazing experience. I feel very happy every day doing what, what, I, what I did in the last summer. And now it's very different because, you know, we, I'm managing people. So it's very different because I don't have the experience in the beach, but with my vendors. So I think that it's, it's very different, but of course I'm very happy. And I feel that I had grown a lot as a person, as, a, as I already told you so I don't know it's it's another thing and now I, I, I know that I can do it a lot of things in Colombia with my job uh, I know that I uh, I have a lot of talents that I even know that I had it so it's amazing it's amazing this experience and I think that uh, we had uh, have a uh, such a nice summer uh, the vendors are very happy I think that this experience is very different um, like the another one, uh, like the last year, because you know, manage people is very different to work here as a vendor. So I think that I had grown a lot of, as a person, as pe as yeah, as a person. So I'm very happy now, and I'm so thank thankful with Rob for this opportunity. Well, Rob is such a nice boss is the I, I, I have tell him told him he is the best boss we can have because he teach us a lot every day every time he's teaching uh, he is telling his stories he has many to share with people so Rob is the greatest job greatest boss I have ever you know, dreamed Are you went skydiving yeah wow was a, a nice, nice experience. Um, it was my second time uh, making that. You know, uh, every every time we are in in the sky, we think a lot of things. 
many thoughts at the same time, but you, you just have to control yourself and say, okay, I'm gonna do it. I have fear, but I'm gonna do it anyway. And then when, the, when you jump, everything change. Your, your, your thoughts uh, change a lot and you, you start living another, I don't know, like you start seeing everything different because you did something that you you wasn't um, that you didn't think that you can do it, and then when you you, you just do it, it's amazing because you say okay okay if I can uh, make that I'm gonna say I, I can I can make everything I just dream. A day at Jones Beach with kids is made more memorable with an ice cream from the red carts that traverse the hot sands. Parents are grateful that they don't have to hike way back to the concession stands on the boardwalk to get ice cream that would most likely melt by the time they found their beach blankets. The sound of the bells are a siren's call to children and the magical misty tendrils of dry ice cascading from the red card beckons the children further. There's a wide variety of ice cream to choose from on a hot summer's day. It's a far cry from the days of illegal dealings of ice cream out of styrofoam coolers. Yeah, good to go, guys. So Growing up here on Long Island, it was a lot of fun. And working on the beach, I was extremely close to my uncle. He was a hematologist, and uh, he usually got out of work around two or three o'clock, and he would come down to the beach to hang out with me. And uh, he'd hang out at the far east side of uh, Field Six, and I'd always pass him, uh, and we'd always talk, we'd joke around, and. Uh, and he would always tell me, you have to make this legal on the beach. If you can make ice cream vending on this beach legal, it, it's going to change your life. And I tried. I tried twice, and I was declined both times by the recurring concessionaires. Uh, so I, I tried getting it legalized, and I, I, I got a no both times. Uh, what I wound up doing was moving to South, uh, South Florida. Uh, what I was doing at that time is I was doing little walk-on bit parts from commercials and, uh, and this TV show called Kate and Alley. Uh, my agent at that time uh, suggested I move down to Florida to be on this new program they were making called Miami Vice. So I went down to Florida, moved down there, and I, I kept in touch with my uncle and at the same time. Uh, kept coming back every summer to sell ice cream on the beach. Uh, I did that from 1986 through... 2000, I'm sorry, 1986 through 1994. And then I stopped altogether because I was, uh, I had a great life in, uh, in Florida that I was building. And I kept in touch with my uncle all the time. Um, and then we flash forward to 2005. He's, he, he thinks that he has tuberculate losis. I flew up from Florida to be with him when he went to the doctor's office to find out exactly what was going on in his body. And the devastating news was that we had uh, stage four uh, lung cancer and we didn't have that much time to, to live. I asked him where he would like to go. And my uncle told me, he goes, you know what? Take me to Jones Beach. And the date was January 9th, 2005. I took him right here to field six. It was a cold, gray, gloomy day. I didn't want to get out of the car. It was, it was just a horrible day with horrible news. And my uncle looked at me, he says, you, you never did what I asked you to do. I was like, what was that? He said, you never made this legal, this beach business legal. And I told him that I tried. And he said, Rob, you didn't try hard enough. You should have tried a lot harder. I didn't know what to say to that. Uh, three weeks later, my eye passed away. And I made a promise to him, to his uh, open casket, that I was going to do everything within my power to make this legal. Seven years later, with the help of uh, uh, the, the park director, her name is Susan Giuliani, she, uh, she gave me the green light to go forward if the concession also agreed to give me the green light. I'll never forget that moment. It was such an incredible moment when they said yes. 
fly up here and take over this business, make this business happen. So on opening day, I wore sunglasses that he used to wear on the beach all the time. Uh, and uh, it was a, pr a promise fulfilled. And believe me when I tell you, it, it, has, it touches me deep down in my soul every day that I'm here just thinking, wow, this is something that he said that he wanted me to do. I promised him I was going to do it. And I actually went out there and I made it happen. Jeff Mason, who is the current uh, park director of Jones Beach, back in the 80s, used to chase me on the beach, uh, take all of my ice cream and give it to his employees to eat. Um, the ironic thing is, is now we work hand in hand on everything that, that we do here on the beach. And it's cool just to see him and, and talk about old times, about him chasing me and me running away. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jeff Mason. I'm park director here at Jones Beach State Park. Um, um, I started working for parks back in 1983 as a seasonal employee here in the Central Mall area of the park. And uh, I worked my way up the ranks and worked at various other parks and then found myself coming back to Jones Beach as the assistant director and uh, three years ago or so became the director of Jones Beach, and I'm now in full circle. I also, which I probably forgot to mention, I'm also the uh, newly director of waterfront parks for the Long Island region, where I oversee all the waterfront parks that have lifeguards. I actually met Rob here as a seasonal employee, because um, Rob would come here, and he was the type of guy that was outgoing, um, funny, witty, but he had a hustle that he was doing here because he was uh, selling his ice cream at a very young age. And um, back then, as it currently is today, if you do not have a license agreement with the state, it's considered illegal or an illegal vendor. And Rob would be here and um, first got wind of uh, the people that you see out here that's not wearing this type of uniform for the concessionaire they're illegal and we need to report that and um, turn them in. Um, and we would do that as we see it, even though at times they would try to make deals with the staff to offer them ice cream so they wouldn't say anything. But uh, I was one of those employees that never wanted to get in trouble and always wanted to do the right things. And if I saw something that we weren't supposed to do, I would just report it, and call it in. and. Rob was very persistent at his hustle. He would come up with different ways. He would never come to the park in the same location back to back. He would switch it up. He would have people uh, would, would, like guys would have their shirts on and take their shirts off to blend in with the public. They act like they're here to be a, a regular beach goer. But um, the uh, one thing they couldn't give away is carrying those styrofoam coolers, which everybody used to have back in the days. Um, and uh, we would see Rob and I would actually look for him. <laughs> and if I noticed him, we would, we, we, we would do what I call the chase. <laughs> he would take off, his um, people that was with him would take off and they would run. But you know, you can't run too fast on the sand and especially when you're carrying a heavy cooler. So they never wanted to get caught. Um, they would drop their cooler. So if they dropped the cooler, we had ice cream for the staff. <laughs> We would pick it up, bring it to the zone office, <laughs> and share it with the staff. Um, and that got to a habit. And Rob, like I said, you know, he's a great thinker. He has plenty of ideas. It actually went to a period where we weren't seeing it, the uh, vendors like that anymore. We couldn't find them. And by happens chance, by cleaning the beachfront, checking up on the beach, I saw smoke coming out of the sand. Went over to that thinking it's a fire or something, but it was like, how can it be? You don't see, you know, flames or anything. Kick the sand a little bit. Next thing you realize, oh, it's a styrofoam cooler buried in the sand and they're using dry ice. <laughs> and that was another way <laughs> how he would plant his coolers on the beachfronts and sell them like by hand and not walking around with the cooler so they wouldn't be noticeable. 
Um, but uh, we caught wind of it at some point, and then we started um, taking binoculars, looking at the beachfront, and wherever we saw smoke coming out of the sand, we knew that was a stash. Oh, I gotta tell you, those were fun times. So many fun, great memories selling ice cream here. When I did it illegally, uh, I used to carry around a styrofoam cooler. Uh, on top of that styrofoam cooler, I would have a towel. I would wear two different types of shorts, two different colors, a shirt and sunglasses and a hat. And the reason why I wore all that was because just in case the, the police saw me selling ice cream, they would radio to their other co-workers that, hey, okay, we've got him in sight. He's wearing blue shorts and a, a white shirt and a, and a hat. So that's what I was assuming what was going on with the chatter on the walkie-talkie. So what I would do is I would ask some nice people that had lounge chairs if they could hold on to my cooler. I would take off my shirt, take off that first layer of uh, shorts, uh, put my towel out, take off the hat, and just lay down. And I tell you, there were so many times when the police would walk right by me, like feet away from me. And I, my heart was pounding. I'm like, oh my goodness, there are guys with badges and guns looking for me because I'm the fudgy wudgy man. So, <laughs> but uh, but that, those were fun times, scary times, but fun times at the same time. Yeah, uh, I used to hide from the police back in the 80s. I was here in, at Field 4 during the 80s. Yep, we were back, back when we were both young. Yeah. <laughs> But we're still doing what we love. Yes, right? we are. We never, we never you, you know what they tell you? Never leave the boat. That's and right. this is the boat. This is the boat. Don't leave the boat. You, you've got Back a lot in the 80s, there was yeah. also, there were other illegal vendors on the beach selling ice cream. And, you know, you would really have, you, you couldn't call anybody to say, hey, these guys are selling ice cream. Can you get them off the beach? So there were actual territory wars where we have to, you know, we threaten each other all the time. Nothing ever came of it, but you'd always threaten, you know, hey, I'm gonna do bodily harm to you if you don't get off the beach. Uh, there was one gentleman that uh, came back one year, and he was pumped up, he was working out the whole winter, and I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna lose this beach. He's gonna kick me off this beach. Uh, he became quite famous. His name was uh, Jordy Belfort, uh, also known as the Wolf of Wall Street. About two years later, I'm selling ice cream on the beach and one of his uh, partners that sold ice cream with him back then uh, was walking on the beach and I went up to him and said, hey, what, what are you doing? This is, this is my beach. You, you guys said you weren't coming back. And he told me, yeah, you know what, Jordy, uh, Jordy is doing some stuff with the stock market and he's doing phenomenal and uh, he remembers that you were a go-getter just like him and he asked me to come on over and see if you'd be interested in coming down and working with him. Um, at that time I was living in Florida and just coming back for the summer months and I asked him do I have to move back to New York or can I just do this from Florida and he said no absolutely not you have to move to New York and, uh, and, and work out of the office over here uh, I declined I didn't want to do it and uh, I'm, I'm sort of glad I, I didn't do it <laughs> so although the movie makes everything look thrilling and fun and, and, and exciting uh, I, I, I couldn't live knowing that I was doing something illegally like that to other people. Well, when I started the business legally in 2012, I had these uh, wheelbarrow type of carts with the uh, hawker bags. I put three hawking bags inside of these carts and I had these big wheels on them and the vendors would push these carts along the sand selling the ice cream. It was difficult and I thought it was easy. And I remember going out there on the second day because uh, the guys were complaining about selling ice cream the carts were difficult to push. I was like, no, no, let me show you how it's done. I got behind that cart and I started pushing it and I actually lifted it too high and I flipped over. <laughs> and I was like, oh great, here's the boss that everybody's supposed to follow. And I'm trying to explain to everybody the proper way to do it. And I do a tumble salt over the cart. <laughs> it was just, it was, it was a great experience that, uh, <laughs> that will stay in my mind for a long time. And a very embarrassing experience. Um, the challenges were that it was hard to keep employees. The employees would come and go. The turnover was, I started off with, uh, with 13 vendors the first day that I started. And by the end of the day, I had three vendors left. Everybody quit. No one decisions for me. 
and it, it was hard to to try to teach them the persistence that my uncle had taught me and say, no, you got to go out there and do it. You have to do it. It's hard, but it's going to get easier, I promise. Um, so those were some of the, the problems. Oh, another big one was uh, at that time, there were 13 illegal vendors right here on Jones Beach. And it was my responsibility now to get them off the beach. Talk about the ironicies in life. It was, it was just an incredible task that was put before me because I knew most of these vendors from way back when. Never in my mind did I thought that 20 years down the road, these same guys were still gonna be selling ice cream on the beach. Um, what I wound up doing was offering them all jobs as managers so they could run it, and, and then I could go back to Florida and do what I was doing at that time, which was uh, producing concerts, which I still do at this time. Um, so a lot of these vendors were really unhappy with me because I was just taking away their livelihood. Um, like I said, I offered them all really well-paying positions, but none of them wanted to do that. And, um, and uh, there was a, a short time period where the police would actually take me to my car because I was getting threatening calls from people that wanted to do me harm. Um, and all of them saying, you're never going to make it, you're not going to last. You'll do one season and that's it, you're done. And here I am 11 years later, still going strong and growing all the time. Uh, now the cars that you see out there now, well, I have a, a good uh, a mentor. Is Izzy Epstein, he actually developed, uh, he was uh, contacted by Kodak to see if he could develop something to do away with the flash view. And he developed the strobe. And now that's what it's on every camera. Right you don't see the flash cube anymore it's because of this gentleman, Izzy Epstein. And Izzy had approached me and after looking at my parts and coming with me to the beach a couple of times, and he says, you know what? I'm gonna invent a car for you that you're gonna love. This car's gonna be phenomenal, it's gonna work perfectly, and it's gonna be easy to push. So I said, okay, let's see what you can do, Izzy. And, uh, and he put together, and in a matter of months, he had this car together, it was phenomenal. However, there was a big cost to it. So uh, what I wound up doing was contacting a, a Unilever, which owns Good Humor, and I asked them if they would uh, if they would pay for the cost of these cards, and in return I would have them wrapped with their logo on them, and I would also sell their brand of ice cream. Uh, they agreed to it. We partnered up, and it was a phenomenal uh, partnership, and, uh, and we, we continued to grow with them. So I'm really excited for it. And Izzy, I go to Izzy's house every Monday. I have dinner with him, and we talk about life. He's a very successful uh, entrepreneur, uh, just like myself. And it, you know, it's always great to listen to your elders because they they always have information that they could give you that you know that's going to help you with your own life. One of the things I always do with my employees when they come here to this, to this country to work, one of the first things I do is I ask them, uh, I was like, you're 22, 23 years old. If you could go back in time to when you were 15 years old, what would you tell your 15 year old self to make your life better? And then I tell them, unfortunately, we don't have a time machine. We can't do that. However, people that have already lived that life have already experienced your experiences, such as your parents and such as older people like myself, can tell you, you know, about the pitfalls, what to watch out for, look forward to, and, uh, and, and what to avoid in your life. And you know, that's what I do to my employees, and that's what I look for in, in Izzy and uh, and my elders as well. Wall City of Cartagena. This is the clock tower over here. This is my family's home, actually. This is where my mom and dad spent uh, their youth. Their youths. <laughs> my mom was just incredible, full of uh, insight. As, as my dad. My dad was also an entrepreneur, just like myself. He owned a singer sewing machine store in uh, Freeport, Long Island. Um, and he taught me. You have to be persistent in life, just like my uncle did. I had three great mentors growing up. Um, when my mom passed in 2016, I decided I'm, I'm going to go to Colombia to try to find some of the memories that I had with my mom. Uh, I would go with her on occasion in the summertime to Colombia and visit relatives that she wanted me to get to know. 
and to get to know the culture. You know, my parents lived here in the United States, but they were proud of their heritage, and they passed that to to their to all of my siblings as well. So when my mom died, I decided I was going to go to Colombia, and uh, it was almost instantaneously that first night that I was there, I was walking around, experiencing the culture, and I was like, wow, this this is my life. This is this is a part of me, a big part of me. So uh, I decided that uh, I was going to uh, to make a move to Colombia, start a business there, and uh, and give back to the Colombian community. Well, this is. The beach on Cartagena, you can see they have their vendors out here. They're all selling stuff. This guy's selling cebeche, which is like a uh, shrimp. And uh, this guy over here is selling uh, snow cones. That they make for you right on the beach. This is Cartagena, where I once sold ice cream here as well. But then these guys, my competitors, <laughs> were paying the police to, uh, to kick me off the beach. In Colombia, it's, it's difficult. When people say that the United States is the best place, the best country in the world, it's it's true. You know, from what I see, it, it's absolutely true. In Colombia, you, you're hindered by growing, by doing your own business, by by expanding your horizons. It, it just seems it's it, that culture. Does, it's not permitted there. It, they, they they try to keep you down. They really do. So. Um, I started a business there. I've been having difficulties with it. Uh, they want everybody has a payout that they want. Uh, I've been wanting to close it, but I'm stubborn at the same time. I need to make this thing work. It took me seven years to get Jones Beach up and running, and now look at the company how it's grown. And that's a battle I always have in my head: is I, I gotta make this happen. I gotta make it work. I've only been at it for. I guess four or five years trying to make it work and uh, I, I'm gonna continue doing that although my wallet tells me I should stop I just keep on going forward with that anyway. When, uh, when my mom passed and I went to Colombia and I saw what was going on there I was like ah, maybe I should bring a couple of Colombians here and show them the difference in the cultures. So I bought four Colombians over to uh, to work with me. I rented a house in uh, Freeport. Um, it had three bedrooms upstairs and then there was a small little thin office that could have passed as a closet. So I slept in that office on an air, mat, an air bed and my employees all slept in the, in the uh, bedrooms upstairs. And I remember that first night they were, I could hear through the air conditioning vents, they were calling their parents, they were crying, they were upset and they were saying how much they miss home and after hearing those conversations I made it a promise to myself that I was going to make this the best experience that they could ever imagine and that it was going to be worth their while that they left their homes, they left all their friends and their family to come and be with me for a couple of months. One of the benefits to work with Robert is that in our days of like today, that is of course not a beach day, um, we enjoy doing a lot of things. For example, today we are riding bicycles, tomorrow maybe we are going to go kayak or to the city. Uh, we, we make a lot of plans to have the motivations to all the vendors high and the morale, so you think it's very important to do that. And we really, really enjoy this work and in our days off we enjoy being together and doing a lot of fun things like today plan. Hey, this is how we spend our free time here riding bicycles. Electric bicycle from Rob, Beach High Olay, here at Picture Park. Come here. There we People ask me what my secret is. I just smile and say, follow me. I'm sitting on top of the world, on top of the world. Life's too short not to really live. I got a big heart.
Oh, yeah. It was a big one, though. From that, it was just incredible. I remember going back to Columbia and visiting the parents of these young students that, that came on over. And uh, I remember one dad telling me, thank you so much. He goes, my son went to you as a boy and he came back as a man. That, wow, that hit me good. That was like, this is working. And I used the lessons that I learned from those seven years of trying to get it legalized on the beach. And from what my uncle was telling me, you got to be persistent. You have to be determined. You have to go forward with it. Don't be afraid. You have to do it. And that's the basis of all these lessons that I try to teach these Colombians. It's that exact same thing. And it's just overpowering the, 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 the feeling, the emotional feeling you get knowing that this mission was accomplished. And every year you just want to make it more, you want to make it grow, you want more people to open up their eyes and just see the proper way to live. You, you got to live without fear, you got to live with, uh, well you're going to feel fear, but you got to go forward anyway. You got to think outside the box and that's, that's, uh, that's what I do with these Colombians. It's, it's, it's my way of giving back to my parents' home. I'm always reminded of the big monster that that has been created here. Uh, we got Jones Beach, Robert Moses, we've got Hector State Park, we've got uh, Hempstead Lake State Park, we've got uh, Rockaway Beach, and we've also got Coney Island. So it's a monstrous task and I, I couldn't do it without the help of all of my workers. So I, I've got managers at each beach, I've got employees at each beach. So all in all, we have about 50 employees that we have throughout the summer season. Some of them come and go. Uh, you try to weed out the ones that just aren't, this isn't for them right away, so you know, okay, they're out of the picture. Well, the, the hiring process for my Colombian staff usually begins in November. That's usually when it gets going. Uh, my, my managers that I have that always come back every year because they enjoy it. Uh, they, they'll go out and scout around and look for, uh, for uh, people that want to come to the United States. They'll go under uh, some interviews. Uh, they need to be able to speak English um, and, and also know the denominations of the dollar. And, you know, these are little tasks that we give them, a multiplication uh, test as well as certain scenarios that may occur. We want to know how they're going to approach these scenarios and then uh, they fill out they must also have passports and then uh, we take their visa application which is for an H2B visa that they have to uh, we have to submit it on January 1st believe it or not. January 1st you have to put it. The United States gives 66,000 uh, work visas out a year and uh, you, the earliest you could submit it is January 1st and Believe me, by January 3rd, they're all gone. So um, they look at those visas in you know, the United States Embassy in Bogota, and then they'll, they'll be picking, I'm assuming it's in Bogota, but it, it is the United States Embassy. And then they'll approve a certain amount of visas to go forward. Usually we, we have an answer by March. They're able, they're eligible to come as early as April 1st, but they're still students and they, they don't get out of school until the first or second week in June. So they usually arrive about the third week in uh, June to start working here. Uh, what I usually do is I rent a huge home because I want, I want to be involved with everything that's going on in their lives from that point on when they arrive. Um, just to teach them about the culture, about life, and, to, and them to teach me things as well. Uh, so I rent this uh, a huge house uh, by Hofstra University, which I guess they rented it out as a fraternity house uh, during the school season, and it's a nine-bedroom, four-bath house. <clears throat> they come into the states, and, uh, and then uh, they'll, they'll all live there. It, and uh, in addition to the expense of the house, now these guys don't have transportation to get around, so I rent uh, four vehicles for them to get around town um, to do their shopping and to also you know, come to and from work. The way we have it set up is uh, we have managers. For example, at Jones Beach, there's this uh, lovely girl named Sonia. She manages my Jones Beach location. 
Now, in that house, we also have a house manager. And the house manager really oversees everything that takes place within the house. You know, garbage night, uh, who's doing the dishes, the laundry, you know, making sure everybody has their sheets clean. It's really, it's run like a business, but a, a, a family business, a really close, tight family business. Uh, at night, we talk about our adventures of the day and any correspondence we've had with, uh, with American people. Um, we also, uh, on occasion, I'll take them to the beach. Just three nights ago, I, I took them right here at Jones Beach. It was uh, 12 o'clock at night. And we stayed at about until 2 in the morning. Just absorbing the sound of the ocean, the waves. It's just incredible. Uh, listening to the stars. Uh, I'm not a religious person, but I'm very spiritual. And, and I always like to be in touch with all my surroundings. And it's cool to watch them experience that in feel nature, the wind, it's just a great thing. Um, of course, uh, the staff comes in, I, I do have a somewhat strict policy that they're not supposed to date each other, but it winds up happening. <laughs> but it's, it's cool, it's, it's always great, it, it's fun, we go out to dinner, uh, uh, we eat sushi together, they, it's, it's great to listen to the to their experiences, what they've done throughout the day. Um, and then uh, we all bond. And the summer, which I explained to them at the beginning, it, it's, it's a bubble. It's a bubble that expands. And then a lot of stuff happens within that bubble. And then at the end of the season, the bubble bursts. And we all go back to our other normal, regular lives, whether it's in Columbia or in Miami or wherever it is that, that uh, we're coming from. in the instrument that you can play with the fingers but like a the guitar sound. yeah guitar violin i just got a violin actually in my house but my last time when i taught that when i just played violin was like when i was 14 because the violin that my dad bought me was a violin 3.4 and i was needing 3.3 is it the measure that we need to, to for the R? And then and is it and if the number is smaller, it's for kids. So I just go um, older a little bit, and my arm just came like a little bit long, so I couldn't play that good. But actually, I I, I, I think I have a video maybe or a picture of me playing. But actually, I love music, and it's really really cool. Let me show you if I have it. <laughs> This is this is embarrassing, but it's, this is what's one. And yeah, that's it. Oh, here's. And I was talking with Caroline because I wanted to do painting where I'm actually in Colombia. I am an artist, but in Colombia the art doesn't sell that well as here. This, this is one of my paintings. When I saw the, that, that history, when I watched the video with Robert, I was like, man, this is crazy. Who imagined that the one dream, one thing that the ice creams can be legal, it becomes to think that the people, Colombian people come here and work for themselves, work from the college, work for the, their dreams, work from the things, their own stuff, will be truth like, you didn't imagine, you didn't realize that, that this is gonna happen, you know, it's like how can a little idea could be a big dream and it becomes better uh, every year that comes, every year, so it's kind of crazy because you know, next year it will be better and the next and the next and the next, so one of the things that I just uh, learn about Robert is that he just 
follow his dreams and he never give up up uh, uh, for, for July 4 I remember that was everyone was just happy because we are that the day that day we will sell all the ice creams and we will need refills at the beach because the field is gonna be fit full I mean like but I remember that like at 1 p.m. maybe the clouds are just comes to the beach and we were like wow the day is gonna be cloudy and they just say that there's gonna be a storm and all and the, the, the beach the beach closed so we were like what what is what are we going to do now so we have all the ice creams I just came with a uh, with the outfit that just you can recognize it. That is the four you like. I mean, like I just got all the United States things, like a, a, a hat of the United States and everything. And I was like, man, what is going on? What we are going to do? This day is failing. I mean, so we. I just take my car. And I just. I just go. I just went to the office. And then I found Robert, and Robert was like really chill. Like he was, hey, nothing, nothing. Don't worry, don't give up guys. This is this is just a start. This is don't worry, it's just a start. The people is going to come back. Still selling guys, it's still selling, nothing is gonna happen. Trust me. And then we just kept um, selling ice creams. And then we just sell ice creams, just we just start to know that the people were coming and they come back they, they came back and what we were like what the people are really came back i can't i cannot believe this it, and even the, if the day was clouded even if there was clouds in the sky the people just don't go the people just uh, didn't go so we were like oh my god robert robert was right and that's really 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 awesome because he knows that it was just a star but he will he was still being it's still hoping it's still being a really great day i mean like it was a really great even if it was a storm there a storm there so we were like okay now i understand i was like okay now i understand I have to keep following my dreams. I have to keep selling ice cream because not not all is over. Not all is over. So what? That was one of the things that I just learned. One of the two or things that I was learned by Robert. I mean, like I was really upset that day when the the beach closed, but the people stay in the parking waiting for the songs. For we're waiting for the sun to come back to the beach. And when I just saw the people coming back, I was like, I can't believe it. Actually, I was a little bit closer to cry. But I just obey the words of Robert. And I just remember he was right. It's just a storm. The people will come back. And we just get the best self of them all. And what's really, really cool, I mean, like, that's one of the things, I mean, it's gorgeous, it's awesome, it's amazing. It's cool, it's one of the things that I can stay in my heart, I can just save in my heart now. Follow my dreams, even if the, if the storm is coming. The storm is not forever. The people is going to come back. The good things are going to come back. Yeah. My name is Diego Alejandro Palomino Aguilar. I am 18 years old. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm from Colombia. Um, in Colombia, I study finance uh, in the Sergio Arboleda. I go past to uh, the third semester. Uh, here, I come with my sister, uh, Maria Fernanda. We try to enjoy this new experience for us. This is our first job uh, for me because in Colombia I have never uh, have a job. 
So I'm be happy to be here in, in New York to meet new people, to uh, have a good, like a good experience here in New York. Uh, about the job, I think that it's a hard job because it's difficult to stay all the day in the down the sun. Uh, it's hot, uh, the weather uh, to push the the car is so difficult many times. But I try to do my best effort. Um, I think that it's a job that uh, has to. I don't know how to say that. Like it's difficult, but you have the attitude, like to. Uh, go to the people and say hey this is the ice cream how are you i want to like be happy and has a half a smile like to the other people and that's i think that's the the best feeling in this job i feel happy i feel like it's a good experience for me to meet rob to meet sonia that are uh, so good people um, Rob is like a so intelligent person, so smart. He have like good ideas. He have like many. Uh, I don't know how to say that. Like um, in in español es como ideas creativas, innovation ideas, uh, innovation ideas for the company, for the cars, for the ice cream, for the for all the people. Like he tries to uh, acoger, yeah. I don't have to say that in English. A coger eh, a las personas, to the people. Eh, he wants to like to try to involve everyone, like to have a good experience. I, I like that Rob. Mm. It's a good boss. It's a so good boss. Hi everybody. I'm Gustavo. I'm from Colombia. Um, this experience. Eh, work with Rob here it's an amazing uh, experience in my life because I meet this country and it's a wonderful country and I was um, my first time working with Rob was in 2018 um, selling ice cream when I was uh, selling my first time with Rob uh, ice creams and now go back to Colombia, I opened my restaurant. Um, it was uh, five years ago. Okay. Uh, sell ice cream on the beach is very funny. Uh, you can meet uh, new people all the time. And different situations. Uh, and it's, it's like vacations. You work, but it is like vacation for me. The sun, I love the sun, I love the beach, I love the landscape, and it's just, just funny. So ice cream with Rob. When, when, when I live with, with the staff and I meet the staff, they become, it's like my family here in the United States. I, I have my family in Colombia, but I have a new family here with Rob and all the stuff. What? what? Mm. Talk about your restaurant or, or um, your hobbies, your hobbies that you have. Uh, my hobbies? Okay. Uh, I am bartender in Colombia and my dream was uh, have my own bar. In the same year when I was working the first time here, uh, I opened my my bar. Right now it's a restaurant, a bar and restaurant. But first it uh, was bar, just bar. Um, I am DJ in Colombia. I'm chef, a bartender. And uh, I love my life in Colombia. I just enjoy my job. Yes, my dream, my, when, when I was a little child, my dream was as my own pizzeria. And this year, I became, become uh, this, this dream. I have my own pizzeria right now. I love the pizza. <laughs> Yeah.
Tabitha is changing her mind. Ash is going to say Tabitha was supposed to leave on, uh, mm. on the 12th. Yeah, right? 12th of, of July. Of July. And yeah, she's still here. I, I went to give you that good news. University? Like, or, no, oh. university? Uh -huh, no, working. Working at home. Yeah, she had a convince. I'm going to say on the 31st, no, the 1st of uh, September. Wow, right, same right. for the whole summer. She was, she was on the phone oh, today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, no. She was on the phone today with no. the There's with the food. You want to eat a lot of food. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. We're not going to know what we're eating. Oh, okay. The what? I'm so glad you're here. Because we have so much pizza. You know, it's it's something that, you know, you wouldn't think about that, you know, that Rob was doing this. You know, he's actually helping other people and, you know, he's working with them and he's bringing them over to the U.S. and they're getting the experience of working here and seeing the country and then going back home and bringing back all the experiences of the things that they've learned over here back home. And he's a, that type of guy that, you know, he wants to involve everybody and he wants to do something everywhere. So he's, you know, he's a, a, a good guy with a good heart that's just trying to um, make better benefits for everyone. Um, he's trying to build a business. He's teaching people how to build a business and how to communicate with other entities and, and, and profit from it. So uh, uh, that's a great thing that he does and, uh, and it works. And he does it on your beach. Yes. <laughs> And you would think it's his beach. <laughs> Hello, I'm Phil, and I've been coming to Jones Beach here for many, many years, probably more than I can count. Particularly one fellow, I didn't know his by name or anything, but I did know he was the fudgy wudgy guy. He'd be walking around, hunched over, with a cooler, a styrofoam cooler, a sand-colored blanket over it, and he'd be kind of calling out his Ipswich bars and everything else, and um, fudgy wudgy. Well, what were those ice creams? I can't even remember them now. This fella with these styrofoam buckets would walk around calling out ice cream names people would wave him over and he'd quietly hunch down, go down on his knees so the spying eyes of the state weren't seeing him and he would try to get through a day of making some profits instead of them coming down, confiscating everything he had. The Jones Beach Club, an online Facebook uh, page came up and in a little bit of time I became a moderator on that and I enjoyed doing that, interacting with people, and it's been a good time. And with that, we had our meet and greets. And the meet and greets were wonderful, where people would come down together just to spend time talking to each other. And one of the places we went to was Field 10, bait and tackle shop over there, but the piers and seeing sunsets. That was something that drew us there, and it drew others also. And a little saying came up after a while. We come for the sunsets, but we stay for the people. And there were many, many good people that we met in all that time. And to connect again, not just a name on Facebook and the Jones Beach Club, but real life people, real live people. <laughs> uh, one thing I, I do want to talk about is, um, it's cool because every year that I come back, I mean, this is my, this is my home. This. Yeah, I live in Miami, I live in, in Columbia, but this is it's always my home. And the J, uh, I'm, I'm very proud to be a JBC member, a Jones Beach Club member. Um, it's cool to hang out with them. You know, during the winter months, I see everything that they're posting. I follow their photos. And it's, it's cool to respond back, but it's so much better when I see them in person. Support them if you can. You might say, oh, I have to go out for an ice cream. Listen, it's a lot of hard work. They're out there trying to do this, giving you a service. You're sitting there on the beach. 
and you don't have to get up and go somewhere else. They're bringing it to you. All right. Go out to whatever a local band is playing and have a couple of drinks with them and just talk about life. I mean, you really get to know these people and to me, they're, they're like family. They're my summer family and it's cool to hang out with all of them. It's cool to speak with Jeff Mina who uh, does the astrology, uh, the, <laughs> the meteorologist here at Jones Beach that does the weather reports. It, it, it's great to see him here every day. And, and know that I'm always looking forward to his uh, weather reports in the morning and then talk to him afterwards about just life, about, about family life and everything else. Uh, it, it's cool to, to see Phil and Carolyn and, and follow them also on Facebook, but then sit down and talk to them, you know, heart to heart. And, and, and all, the other, all the other people, Gary, Jocelyn, there's so many, Claudia, there's so many of them, Ginger, just great to hang around with. Roy, Roy is another guy. Just all cool stuff in the family. We all we all are connected from this beautiful, fabulous beach with this roaring tides coming in and the open sand. It's just it's just awesome that that's how we're all connected. And um, and Fourth of July. Fourth of July is just another major event. This past Fourth of July, uh, there was uh, lightning close by, so they closed the beach twice. Uh, my employees were all upset because they thought they were going to make some money and uh, and I told them, don't worry, don't worry, everybody has a big reason to come back, so the beach is definitely going to fill up, and it did, and it did, and they were all happy, they were all happy. Everything, everything always works out the way you want it to be. So at the end of the season, you, you try to calculate how much ice cream you're going to need to get by until Labor Day. So, I never get it right. My math is always wrong. I don't know if I do it on purpose or not, but uh, I always end up with an abundance of ice cream after the season's done. And what I do is I donate it to, to the elders. I, I go to senior citizen homes and I give it to them. I mean, they've lived their life. They have so much to share with everybody. It's cool to, to speak with them and converse with them throughout the summer. At the end of the summer, this is my gift to them, is that... I also give it to uh, to local uh, elementary schools as they're all go going back to school, you know, getting ready for the school year and everything. I, it's just something that I like to do. And I, I go back to Florida and Columbia feeling happy, uh, accomplished, and knowing that uh, that I had a voice this summer and, and I, may, I brought a lot of uh, smiles to people's faces. Well. Hi guys, my name is Ginger Bonner. I'm the activity director here at Amber Court Assisted Living. I've been here 25 years and I'm also a lover of Jones Beach all my life. And I remember the Fudgy Wudgy Man vaguely. I didn't know him back then, but little did I know that years later, after hearing Fudgy Wudgy, Chip Riches, Frozen Fruit Bars, that I would meet this man, Rob Guerra, who, who has a business called Superstar Productions, Beachside Valet, and he sells ice cream on the beach. It sounds simple, but it's more than just ice cream on the beach. He um, brings in people from Columbia, young people, and inspires them and lets them know that they could do anything they want he even takes some skydiving so that they know they can achieve their dreams, think out of the box. Strawberry. You want chocolate? Yeah. Chocolate or strawberry? Chocolate or strawberry? John, chocolate or strawberry? Chocolate or strawberry? Chocolate or strawberry? Gloria, chocolate or strawberry? Like chocolate or strawberry? Chocolate or strawberry? So anyway, little did I know, and a couple of years ago, I was going to meet Rob. I actually met him at the band show, but he holds all these beach buggies at the uh, at the at the East Bathhouse, 
And he ended up really making a difference, not only in my life, and not only in the life of the young people from Colombia who were all so polite and charming and kind. They're just amazing young people that I've had the pleasure to meet during the last few years. But he's also made a difference right here at Amber Court with the residents, giving out ice cream and coming to visit them. And he's even given us video tours of Colombia and showed us around Cartagena. And it's just been uh, very special having him in our lives. How's that? That's, that's good. Some people, we had to see when we came, went to the beach. Yeah. We went to the beach. And I let the security know, you know, the maintenance, the maintenance, I'm going to come in, and, you know, shh, when, when the bus pulled up, all the maintenance men and all the lifeguards were lined up like soldiers waiting for us to come. And this didn't happen years ago before I knew him. All the, I was gonna say security, but all the people who worked there with those shirts, they were all lined up and they escorted each resident from the bus to the beach, took out their chairs, remember? And then there comes Rob and there comes Mike to feed me, the lifeguard. He came with his buggy, you know, whatever, you, the little, the golf cart thing. Then Rob came with his buggy, and we all got in two or three at a time and rode down the beach. Remember, Phyllis? Thank you. Right on, take away. Thank okay, you. you better let all Thank you, Rob, for the ice cream. Most delicious ice cream. Right. And I really mean it. I loved it. <laughs> thank you so much again. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Thank you. Just giving an ice cream. Thank you for the ice cream. Me. Hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> My name is Arlene Delacat. I live at Amber Court for five years. Everything is terrific. But once we met Rob, he made it super perfect. He does everything for us. He comes with ice cream, but before he even gives us the ice cream, once we got to know him, we loved him from the bottom of our hearts. The man is gold, and I love him for everything he does and says, and we love him when he comes to Amber Court. He's terrific. So oh, back in 2012 when I initially got the approval for this to do this on the beach, I'll never forget. At that time, I was uh, I was uh, producing concerts. I was working with some really big name people, uh, Journey was one of them, uh, uh, Grand Funk Railroad was another one, uh, it, uh, yeah, it was just a, a lot of fun. Now imagine this, I sit, at that time I sit with my, my wife and I tell her, hey, guess what, <laughs> I'm going to New York to sell ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> she thought I was nuts, just like everybody else. She's like, what are you doing? You're going to leave this career that you have to go sell ice cream? I was like, no, 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 no. This is the promise. This is the promise I made to my uncle. I'm going to get this up and running, and I'll be right home. Give me one month. I'll come back. Well, it didn't work out that way. I, bought, I came on up here. I got the business up and running. The state loved what they saw and what I was doing. And right away, I was offered Robert Moses State Park. And then after that, we've grown every year, every year. Now we're in Rockaway, we're in Coney Island, and the business continues to grow. Uh, I, I like kayaking, uh, so I, it, I started doing kayaking. I have e-bikes that we rent. We have solar-powered uh, Surrey bikes. It's all innovation. Whatever is the newest, hottest thing, I want to be on top of that, and I want to make it happen, and I want to make it happen right here in New York. Um, I see the business continue to grow. I, I don't believe in retirement. I'm gonna, I'm gonna work as long as this continues to work and this continues to tick. 
and uh, I'm going to continue to make this uh, this company Beachside Valet grow. I want to make it when you think of the beach, oh, Beachside Valet is going to be there. Beachside Valet is going to have a VIP section set up on the beach. Uh, Beachside Valet will have a solar powered umbrella so you could charge your phones while you're hanging out and relaxing on the beach. There's so many ideas, so many things that are, that are yet to come. Just keep an eye, we're going to continue to grow. I'm very confident in that. And, uh, and it, to think it all started just because of a promise, a promise that I made to, to my uncle. It's, that fudgy wedgie guy, he did his thing. He was here, he was gone, didn't know him. Just a guy with a cooler. But then a little later, started seeing red carts coming along the beach. Little bells ringing and those same familiar words of different ice creams belted out. People selling ice cream. And that was good. It was a service brought to us on the beach, especially a guy like me who didn't want to keep on going back and forth with, with, with my caravan of kids and everything else. The service came down to the beach, bought our ice cream, and what was really a, a favorable thing to me is that most of these people were young people just starting their professions, just starting to work. And there's a fellow Rob, he was behind these red carts. That was the fudgy wudgy guy. And somehow in time, through hopes and wishes of his uncle, became legit here at Jones Beach. He got licensed, insured, and all that other kind of thing. And that's the guy behind those red carts. So he brings service to us. He, brought, he brings young people jobs and opportunity. And he gives it all with a very optimistic and positive spin on things because he believes it. And he knows he's lived this of working, walking these beaches and knowing that you can move up from there. And that's Rob. Rob's a great guy. I've gotten to know him much better over the years. And um, he's a beautiful man. He's a beautiful man who encourages young people to work hard and to start their profession and whatever they're going to do uh, as entrepreneurs or whatever in life. Um, their ice cream's real good too. What a great feeling of uh, accomplishment. I tell you, every day that I wake up, every day that I'm here on the beach, all I think about is, wow, you put your heart, your soul, your mind to whatever it is, you can make it happen. And that's, that's, that's my story on this, and I try to teach that to, to the people that work with me. You know, I take them under my, beneath my wing and, I, uh, and uh, I just show them, hey, I know it's tough out there, I know it's hard to push a cooler, I know it, that, those things weigh 175 pounds, but do it. And then don't just focus on today and making sales, use that in everything that you do in your life because that's going to help you shoot for the stars and, and make all your dreams and all your wishes come true. Just like it did for me.